product usability is a significant aspect of what makes a product successful. If you burn yourself on your toaster every time you use it, you're not likely to buy that model or that brand ever again. This takes on a bit of a different nuance in the world of software because things are much more malleable, things are much more dynamic, and it's easier to convince people to learn how to use something than it is to build it catered to people's whims. The field of UX, user experience, does a lot of research into what appeals to people's intuitions in terms of interfaces, how people react to visuals and prompts, all of that. But a lot of the time, those results don't end up being the things that guide the development of the interface for a piece of software. A lot of times there are, from a project management point of view, more pressing concerns, whether it's the difficulty of implementing a certain method of interaction and the time and cost that would be required to implement it, or whether it's that making a certain adjustment to the user flow of a product would require adjusting a feature that has been in place for 10 years in this particular software and the users have become accustomed to it and those are some of the core users and you don't want to risk alienating them from the software and driving them to a competitor. Or whether you just have people in-house who think they know better than the research. And the research itself isn't always correct and sometimes you'll see studies as within any field that contradict each other. But a lot of the time, the decisions of usability that benefit the organization that creates the software are not necessarily going to be the best for the users. And because a piece of software is so much unlike a toaster, whereas you cannot convince someone that being burned on their toaster is a feature and not a bug, you can often convince someone that an unexpected behavior in a piece of software is a benefit and not a downside. And this results, along with the natural complexity of some software systems, in an entire industry in training people to use pieces of software, whether it's something small like a video on the website itself indicating here's how you use this, or whether it's an entire classroom seminar given in corporate environments to the people who will be using this software, or anything in between. The principle of educating the user tends to take precedence over building the software to the user. And there's some facet of truth in this, in that everyone wants things a little bit differently. If you ask a thousand different potential users of your software what they want, not only will they not necessarily be clear in their own heads on what they want when you drive into the real questions of how things should work, you'll find a lot of contradictory answers, but each of those thousand will probably have a slightly different view on what the ideal flow of the software should be. And obviously you can't build a custom version for each individual user. And if you attempt to provide a high level of flexibility and adaptability so that the user themselves can cater the software to their needs, then not only does it explode in complexity to develop the software, but it also adds complexity for the user since they now have to figure out how to adapt it to their needs. And since most of the time this doesn't actually apply for the average user, you end up giving them an unpleasant experience. It seems complicated, it seems burdensome, and so even though they're getting something that they wanted, they are able to adapt the software to their needs, they're still more likely to bail on it. Because unless they are experienced at this kind of thing and know what they're doing, or they're really in it to win it and committed to using this software, they're likely to bail to something that they think meets their needs, at least for now, but does not require them to go through this whole effort to get it to do what they want. So it's sort of a lose-lose situation from the company's point of view, and that's why it's much easier a lot of the time to educate the user. Build close to what you think will satisfy the majority of your users, and then just tell people how to use it. And this actually kind of makes sense, right? You want to build something like the same way you would with a physical appliance, something that caters to the most people in a reasonable way, and then get people to understand how to use it. But it does allow the organization that builds the software to include concessions to themselves that put an additional burden on the user, and then force the user to then compensate and learn how to adapt for this adjustment. And the end user may not have any way to distinguish a feature that's there because that's the only reasonable way to implement it from a feature that is built a certain way because it was more convenient for the company. And then when some in-house UX designer 
comes up with an innovative new practice for how to run some user flow or some task in the software, even giving the best benefit of the doubt that it actually improves efficiency and is more user-friendly and will save people time and effort, when you get right down to it, you are forcing all the users of this feature to learn it over again. Take something that they've been doing perhaps for years and completely adjust how they look at it, how they understand it. If they've built tools or macros around this feature, as is possible in some software systems, then those will completely break. And all this on the whim of someone who found a better way to do something. So it's always a careful trade-off. Something like Excel is a system that has innovated new features, but its core practices have remained the same for many, many years because the power users who really know what they're doing, the average user who just needs to be familiar enough to do a few things, but they use it a lot, are looking for continual experience that is cohesive across time. If they have to relearn a thing every few years or every few months, they're not going to stay on Excel very long. Contrast this with something like Gmail, where the look and feel adapt frequently. It provides a fresh new look. It keeps users interested. The fundamental features typically remain the same, and the user gets to feel like they're on the cutting edge. For something like email, this might make sense to an extent because the number of different features and goals that you're trying to accomplish in this system are few. There is an upper limit on the complexity of what you're trying to accomplish, which is radically different from something like Excel. But still, it's enough to drive away some users. But Google doesn't have to care. Not only do so many people use these Google products, but so many people use them that they become ubiquitous. And you threaten yourself and your organization by moving away from such a thing. If you drop Gmail because it's too difficult to use, then you either have to get every user to set up an email client, then try to connect directly to the server from it, which then adds another layer of difficulty for every user and more things can break, or you switch to another web-based email client completely, which again requires porting everything over, getting users adapted to the new system, and there's no guarantee that that one won't change. So by and large, it's safer to just stick with Gmail for the typical user, typical organization, and come what may. The overhead of learning some change that Google has made is much smaller than changing your entire ecosystem, your entire workflow. So these are the two sides of the coin here. If you change too much too radically, you lose people en masse. If you don't change at all, you stagnate and decay. And it's typically the user, the end user, who bears the brunt of this two-pronged problem. As a user, it pays to stay educated on the latest trends in your software of choice. But boy, it's a lot of work. And if there's a company out there who can figure out how to undercut this whole problem by appealing to the average user in a way that balances new features with tried and true methods in any business vertical, then they would be stumbling onto a gold mine. It's not a simple problem. As more and more things become software reliant, we're nearly saturated with software as it is, but there are constantly new niches being carved out which can drive up efficiency hugely and convince organizations to adopt these software systems. So it's very much still an open problem. And if you can get users onto a system without having to constantly educate and re-educate them, then you're going to have a really winning model.